Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us here at the last presentation of the day at the APG Investor Days. With me, uh, I have uh, CEO Carsten Drachman from uh, from Gumspace, and uh, my name is Morten Larsen, analyst here with uh, APG Sundal Collier. Carsten, I'm looking very much forward to hearing what you have to tell us today. Will you take it away, please? Absolutely. Thank you, Morten. And uh, hi, everybody up in uh, Stockholm or wherever you're you're sitting. Um, I hope I will make this last 25 minutes uh, uh, exciting so you can uh, can still stay awake here. Um, okay, next slide, please. I'm going to talk you through a quick overview of uh, Gumspace. So what are we doing? I'm, I'm assuming there's perhaps some new investors who doesn't know us, so just a little bit of, about what we're doing. I'll talk about the transformation we're going through, and then we had our quarter three report, interim report just came out last week, Thursday. So I'll take you through that as well. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, so what are we doing? Very simple, uh, new space, new space value chain. New, why, why we call it new space? New space is about these smaller satellites. It's a bit more exploratory. Uh, sometimes understanding new space, you need to understand old space. Old space are, are very big satellites, $100 million, flying way out, 36,000 kilometers out in space. When you're watching a, a Viasat, uh, uh, sat tv at home it's coming from one of these old space satellites new space satellites is much faster uh, a satellite can cost anything from a million euros two million euros can be less depending on on how big it is it goes up quickly development times is maybe one one and a half years uh it's relatively cheap to uh, launch on, on on a rocket today so just to understand new space is something that's moving faster uh, and it's catering more towards um, some of the new uh, applications that are around the world that we will uh, will talk about that you can use uh, space for. So you don't have to wait 10 years, do a lot of tests and spend $100 million. You can do it much faster. Very simple, uh, three key areas in order for our satellites. We, we are doing satellites, we are building satellites that fly in space, but they have to get up there. So there is a bringing satellites to space. You know the name SpaceX, Elon Musk, I don't think. There's a lot of talk about that, even if you're not familiar with the satcom industry. I'm, heard, I'm sure you heard about uh, Elon Musk. So they are, for example, uh, sending rockets up on a regular basis. This sending satellites into space has become much more commodity. There's a lot of offerings out there. The costs have come down a lot. It's one tenth of what it was about 10 years ago. So it's much more accessible. Well, once the satellites are flying there, you need it needs some help. It needs to communicate somewhere on ground. That's where you have these Earth uh, to uh, satellite links. So these big antenna dishes that are on the ground. You see them around in the landscape. You've probably seen pictures about it. So once the satellites are flying, they're communicating with one of these parabolic antennas. It's a little bit more advanced than your that your satellite antenna at home because it has, it has quite high speed uh, link in both directions. You Typically, you're just receiving for your TV. OK, that's all great, Carsten. We have some data. There's some communication. What are we going to do with it? Well, there's a number of different applications that you can use it for. It's not interesting in and of itself flying a satellite. Uh, it's interesting what a satellite can do and information you can get down to, to ground. Next slide. So what can we do with it? Um, very simple. The, 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 the simplest uh, one that everybody will understand is uh, uh, communication. So voice communication, data communication. You already had sat phones for a long time. They were running via the bigger satellites further out. So communication is there. This is what Elon Musk uh, is doing with uh, with his Starlink, and there are others now setting up communication networks. But in addition to that, it's used for atmospheric uh, monitoring, so weather information. It can be used for maritime communication or observation, because uh, the satellites that we have here, they're not geostationary, as it's saying. They're not just over one point uh, on, on Earth. They're actually moving around. In very simple terms, every 12 hours, a uh, satellite is passing over you. And the same satellite keeps going around, so it's keep passing the same place on Earth twice uh, uh, in 24 hours. Uh, so you're using that for uh, ship observation, for example. You're using it for something called signal intelligence. One of our, our best customers right now is uh, in France. They use it to monitor fishing boats between UK and France, and they have a very key line who can fish where. Sometimes these fishing boats, they turn off information about who they are, and they go dark, so to speak. Uh, not going to work anymore. We can still see them because the minute they use a walkie-talkie, some kind of search device for uh, for finding fishes, we can see them and we know who they are. So this is something that the French government in particular uh, are using right now. 
Um, we also have uh, aviation, so communication to aviation. I'm sure if you look back in time, a lot of sad stories about airplanes that has disappeared. Uh, you always wonder, why is there no communication? I don't know where we know where they, they are. Actually, because you don't have that good coverage yet in terms of satellites, but it's coming, so there's an application there. And there's a lot more application. Uh, the simplest one to understand is a camera. Take a picture of Earth, a certain place, and uh, up to a certain resolution, you can see, you can see, I guess, if it's cloudy, you can see if there are cars, if there are people, you can see a forest, how it's evolving over the seasons. You can monitor coastlines to see that are the coastline uh, retreating or are they getting bigger? How is the ice melting, et cetera? You get the picture. There's a lot of stuff that you can do from, uh, from space. And now it's possible to do it without a huge investment. Next slide. So what do we do at GOMSpace? We have a couple of areas. We do so-called subsystems. So uh, example, compare satellite to a computer. In a computer, you have a battery pack, especially if it's a laptop. You also have a power. You need some kind of power so your computer can run. You do exactly the same thing, but just for satellites. So specialized to what satellite. So we have, we call it products and subsystems. We also uh, do, or, or rather integrate payloads, can for example be a camera, it could be a uh, an antenna, the payload is defined as the application, the hardware and software that gives some meaning to this. You can't do much with a battery and a power supply, so what? It's not going to do anything. But if you actually add other things to it, then it makes a lot of sense. Then we build full uh, platforms. So we are basically building an entire satellite. So from customer specification, we build an entire satellite, everything included. We transport it to the launch site, as it's called, where the rocket is. It's put on a rocket. It's sent up to space. When it's released from the rocket, we are managing to the right hand side it's called constellation managing management. We are making sure that the satellite comes up and running. You see the things sticking out there, try to look like a satellite without looking too stupid. Um, the, these are solar panels. When it when it's sent up, you can't have them sticking out like that when you fly in a rocket. It's not really gonna work. It's probably too much friction, et cetera. They actually fold it in there like that. So the first thing you want to do when you get up is you got to get your solar panels for, uh, released in a proper way so you can start generating power from the sun and so forth. So this is what we are very good at. This is our core business. Next slide. So uh, who are we? Where are we? We actually founded in 2017. We are the oldest new space company. That's a contradiction in terms. So we are actually the oldest new space uh, company. We're the first uh, um, of, of, of the kind. Uh, our founders, we still have two of them left. Uh, uh, they're fantastic people. They launched the first satellite at the you know, university years in uh, around 2000. They started building that. They created GOM space. And now here we are 17 uh, years later. And uh, we have flown a lot of space missions, which means we have a lot of technology up and flying. We have a lot, even more products. We're also selling products. Remember the power supplies or the battery packs. We're selling that to our competitors, partners, so we have a lot of our technologies flying in space. Uh, and why is that important? It's important because you never know what happens when it gets out there. There's always a risk when you go into space and we go, remember it's new space, it's fast, uh, it, doesn't, it cannot cost too much, et cetera. So there's a risk, but we have tried this many times. You have a lot of technology. So working with GOM space is, uh, is, um, it's quite good for, for our customers. We, we are a reliable partner. We are 130 people. I'll tell you a story about that later. Our main business right now is in, in Europe. These are 2022 numbers. We do see a shift. Uh, we are focused in North America, and we do see in Asia also that there starts to be more opportunities. Next slide. What excites us as GOM space when we go to work and we build products and we like being together is exciting, but the most exciting part is Watching that rocket going up, when we uh, last week we had two satellites, we call them Bro, this is for a French customer, I explained to you about the fishing boats. We have two full satellites going up. And actually, we have a number of other satellites, also Korean satellites going up, where we have, there's a little quote on your right hand side there, we have a lot of technology involved. So it was, we didn't build the whole satellite, but they have a lot of our components. So, check mark, more technology going up, come space, we know what we're doing, and, it's, um, and, and we keep increasing presence in space. The two exciting things in the journey here, this first, uh, will the rocket explode? Because it, it happened to explode sometimes. It didn't, that was great. So that was the first, yay. So have you ever seen the control rooms from NASA when they send something up and everybody is cheering and clapping? We do that at GOM Space, we're all watching it on video. So good for us, good for our customer. 
The next thing is, can you actually hear it? It goes up there, it's sitting up in space, and and you do, believe it or not, uh, it's uh, it's super not sophisticated. It has something called a beacon. It says beep, like a, a life support, and you have to beep. So we are actually listening for the beep signal because that's the first sign a satellite is alive. It has reached, uh, it is where it is. And then we can start talking to it and say, unfold your wings, your, your panels, and then move on from there. Super exciting. Next. Okay, so let's talk a bit more about the company. Um, we are the oldest startup in the world is what I used to say. I started in uh, in March uh, this year. I've worked in the uh, telco industry, Nokia, for many years. I've been 10 years in SATCOM, uh, done a number of turnarounds before, and I joined uh, GOMSpace in March. GOMSpace has great technology, great people, et cetera, but has been struggling making money. That's why I'm here, and that's what I'm focused on. Next. So just checking why my it's my perspective is when I when I went into this job realizing hmm, there's a challenge here but let me just check is is this something we can work with absolutely technology and people yes we have that global brand yes uh, one of the oldest brands uh, ten years ago there was almost only uh, gum space around so everybody called it was uh, call it aggressively waiting by the phone kind of sales obviously that changed because there are more. So great brand. Uh, are we in a growing market or declining market? Absolutely growing market. No doubt about that. Is there an evolution in customers' applications? Do we see more and more uh, different customer segments seeing a need for using space? Yes, there is. Uh, definitely growing. Uh, look, if you look a bit on, on the financial evolution here, okay. Actually, we've had a, a nice growth, 24% KGAR. That, that, that's quite decent. Um, the dark ones below is unfortunately the, the EBIT, so we haven't really made much money yet. Actually, we haven't made anything since we were listed in 2016. It's okay for a period of time. It's okay. Your startup, uh, you're going out, this is new space. It does require investment. It's a market that's maturing. That's also why it's fun to be here also as, as an investor. This, this is a market that's developing. However, my commitment to the shareholders from the beginning of the year, don't worry, I will be focused on making money. We need to start uh, sustaining this so we can uh, we can build a healthy business. Uh, what you see on the last little green one here is uh, what we reported Thursday. We are, have actually reached the first three quarters, 196 million revenue. So even though I haven't had any focus on revenue, nevertheless, we achieved the same revenue as last year. And we also, uh, without hesitation, predicting that our 2023 is going to be a record year from a revenue perspective. Okay, EBIT needs to improve. Absolutely focused on that, but we are moving in the right direction. Next slide. So what are we focusing on? Profitability and cash. Cash and profitability. Absolutely uh, the focus. I don't have to be careful how I formulate it. I'm not so worried about revenue. I'm not so worried about EBITDA or EBIT. All of that is going to come. We manage our cash. And we make sure that we focus on profitable business or so profitable products or projects. No more, uh, this is really strategic and great. And, you know, we'll do it even though we lose money. Those days are over. We've done that. We have the experience. We don't need to do it anymore. We are going to focus on our product business. This has been on the prioritized product business is uh, where we have a high volume. Uh, we have a good range of products. They're competitive in the market. Customer C, customer likes, customer order. Supply chain production, ship, collect money. No engineering involved. Good business. It scales easily without having to add resources to it. And we already have huge production facilities in, in all four in Denmark, so no problem. Focus on project profitability. We cleaned up during the year. I stopped a couple of, or, or exited contracts on a couple of projects that I could see we're not, we're not making money or we're not going to make money. It's just not, this is not going to help us. It's just going to consume our um, valuable resources, but we are not making any profit for ourselves or for the shareholders. So we are very much focused, and it's also uh, uh, focused on the new projects coming in. We're really only doing something where we believe that we, we are going to help our focus on profitability and cash. The last one is, uh, is I call it almost a no-brainer. Nevertheless, it's, uh, it's, it's not that easy. Expand in North America. North America is about 60-70% of our accessible market, and we are hardly present. We have a couple of guys there now. We signed a good contract with a with a a big company in the US that can help us. So that's our transformation. That's what we find at the beginning of the year, and this is what we are focusing on. Next slide, please. Oh, and by the way, uh, I'm not going to take any credit for that uh, at all, and I'm not being sarcastic. This happened uh, just slightly before I came in. 
uh, 29%, 29.9 to be exact, percent of the shares uh, are owned by a guy called um, Hargreaves, Peter uh, Kendall Hargreaves. He's a billionaire in pounds. Uh, there was the other side of my due diligence, first trying to understand, is there something here that can work with? Can I help this company turn around? So I thought, yeah, I can. But what, what about capital? What about access to capital? It can be difficult to turn around and grow a business without having a little bit of uh, backing. We do. We have uh, one of the richest men in in the UK. It's not quite as rich uh, as Elon Musk or or, or um, Sir Richard Branson, but nevertheless, he's up there. And as all slightly eccentric billionaires, sorry, Peter, if you're listening, uh, space is of interest purely because it's just cool and because he can. So to me, this uh, this has a huge value, and uh, we we can talk with him uh, when when we want to. Uh, so just adding to the transformation story, the company has been put in a good shape to execute. We've shaped it up. We have defined clear focus areas. We are starting to become uh, going in the right direction cash, and we have access to capital when we need it. Next slide, please. Okay. Optability and cash, I said that. Next slide. Let's talk about Q3. Next slide. So we achieved uh, three uh, three key goals in the, in the third quarter. Some of you have followed our story, some of you are new, so let me repeat it a little bit. Uh, in the third quarter, we've been focusing on the turnaround and transformation plan that I just showed you. So really focused on how do we improve our cash situation. We have reorganized ourselves into some clearer uh, organizational structures. I call them business units because we can actually start measuring much more precisely our business. Our free cash flow is trending positively. We actually, you see on the right-hand side, we had minus 6 million and say, okay, Carson, you're still losing money. Well, yeah, it's, to me, it's close enough to zero. Um, we actually started our beginning of the years having minus 47 million. We had minus 28 million in the second quarter and in the third quarter minus six. So we're trending in the right direction. And I'll show you in a second uh, what our goal is so, so you understand that. Uh, and then we also had good improvement on product uh, order intake. Remember, I told you about this is uh, this is uh, quick turning. Uh, it's good. It's it's good cash flow. It doesn't require us a lot of extra work. We already have the production capacity, so we are starting to improve on that. We have a lot of focus uh, with salespeople. I mentioned the revenue uh, highest today. Didn't have a focus. Just realized when we're doing a report. Oh, actually, this is doing. This is looking pretty good because I have my eyes on one thing and one thing only: cash and profitable projects. But this is good. And then uh, part of the story of becoming free cash flow positive is also the, the reduct cost reduction plan we kicked off in January. We were actually more than 200 people in the beginning of the year. We have laid off 70 people, sadly, sadly, but necessary. We have now reached our target, which was around 130. We have stabilized it at that level. You also see that it's a much more healthy level to, for us to work from now. And, um, and we are cautiously recruiting. We are cautiously recruiting because there is a lot of demand for, uh, uh, for, there's a lot of questions to us. There's a lot of opportunities out there and you're not going to win anything without engaging. So we have a lot of demand for our skilled resources to engage with customers, to understand uh, opportunities, uh, hopefully for, for this year in 2024. Next slide. Key figures, um, I want you to focus uh, um, on the, the orange graphs and the green ones, the green ones from the, from the third quarter. The first the first one is auto intake. So uh, even though it's not a big auto intake, it's it's highly profitable. You see it's trending upwards. The revenue is trending upwards. The EBIT is trending upwards. The employee is trending downwards. That's a good thing because that means lower cost. So overall, uh, the trends are there. I'm not by any measures claiming that we have an, an excellent, uh, you know, uh, Q3 in the sense of if you look at it isolated seed from a, from a trend perspective, you're doing the right thing, it's working, and we're moving in the right direction. Next slide. Okay, so where are we heading with all of this? Uh, I have told the market early in the year, I'm not going to tell you about revenue or, or EBIT forecasting it because I'm not really interested in it, but I'm interested in the free cash flow because that's going to help us stabilize our business. So look at the trend here, as I mentioned. Uh, we are, we, are, we are working towards second half of 2024. That's our objective. And by latest by then, we want to be free cash flow positive, which means we have more cash coming in than going out. So we, we are okay and we can keep building up our bank account. You see the trend here from the last five quarters. Uh, we are definitely moving in the right direction. The company has lost uh, in, in Q3, Q1, Q4, Q1. Uh, so Q3, Q4 last year, more than 40 million per, per uh, quarter. 
uh, we improved it in Q2, and now we are improving it also in uh, in the Q3. Next slide. So to sum it up, next slide. So just uh, checking again, um, we are building satellites and components for satellite. We have the technology and the people. We have a global brand. We are in a growing market. I see a positive evolution on customers and applications of what we're doing. Uh, we are we build both satellites and we have parts for satellites. So we are not only doing satellites and for ourselves, we are also helping our competitors and others uh, doing this. Uh, we are in a transformation mode with focus on cash and profitability. We are trending in the right direction. You can see that in our interim report in Q3. There's a demand for our products going up, so we have to cautiously hire. And we have a very strong principal investor in, in Peter Hargreaves. So I have a little bit of wriggle room, so when I need some capital, I'm pretty sure I can get it. Thank you. Thank you, Karsten. Uh, that was a very interesting and clear communications on a turnaround that appears to be going in the right direction. Um, a couple of questions from me. Uh, I believe we have time for a couple. Um, we are coming out of this turnaround, or we're still in it. It goes the right direction. How should we as investors uh, look at what kind of, you're not commenting on profitability, but how should we look at uh, what kind of company we have after the turnaround? I mean, yeah. the growth is out there, but how should we sort of think about cash generation versus margins, returns in this company? Yeah. So what you should look at is, uh, like I said, it's the oldest startup in the world. The the typically, the first part of the life of a startup is about uh, getting reference cases, uh, getting technology track attraction, proving that you can do it. Cust uh, investors are happy to uh, to give you more money so you can do that. We are, we are turning away from that now. So look at this as a turn away from, okay, we are, we are now, uh, we are getting a little bit too old. We are in the teenage years and we should actually start to have at least an, an income from, uh, you know, doing bottles in the supermarkets. Uh, so you should look at it as once we get our cash flow in control, the other things will follow. If we can manage our cash flow, do the math, EBITDA is probably going to be positive for following that. Top line doesn't really matter so much. The top line is going to come because we're going to grow with the market. We have a good market position. Uh, what I need to do right now is to make sure that uh, the cash is coming okay, and then you'll also see uh, the growth will follow the market as a minimum. Your um, principal uh, investor, Mr. Hargreaves, um, has been out in, I believe it was Julian's post in a couple of weeks ago, talking about, well, I'm not so focused on the near-term profitability in this, uh, as long as we make money learn long-term. He sort of says three to five years' time is kind of thing, <laughs> which does not coincide very well with, with sort of the strong momentum that you're showing in the turnaround. And now you're beginning to do cautious rehiring. Are you beginning to turn a little bit more towards a, towards a reinvestment mode? Uh, and where should we possibly see this going? Or is this no. what is happening here? Yeah, first of all, I don't think actually it's contradictory because I think when, when Peter Hargreaves talks about that, he's also about Sorry. talking about his return, right? He doesn't, he, he's not He's not the investor. And yes, I read all your comments online, wherever you put them, that, that says, what the, wonder what's happening on Friday, if I can get rich on Friday. He's not that kind of investor. He he he, he is, has a much more longer term perspective for this understanding that it takes some time. But at the same time, uh, he is, of course, focused that we're doing well. It's not about just putting more money in just because. So I think it's uh, it's quite well uh, aligned. Uh, I apologize to Mr. Peter Hargreaves if he listens in on me calling him yeah. on. Final question for me. Um, Gonspies was a very big Danish investment industry success. Then it became uh, has had trouble in the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. What do you think we as investors should take away f and have learned from this journey that the company has been going through, and and where are what are we going to take from this going forward in the company and for the whole space adventure? Yeah, yeah. What are the lessons here? What What are the lessons? Let me uh, maybe I rephrase the question a little bit towards why Why did Why did I jump uh, into this? Well, I've done it. I did it because I've done a couple of turnarounds before, so I had an idea what needed to happen. I've also run a listed company before. Um, I saw it as uh, this is possible to do, but it's taken too long to get to the point of of focusing on making money. 
So from my point of view, what you should expect uh, from the company is that it's basically moving uh, three years too late from uh, positioning, technology, you know, uh, uh, growing presence to focusing on cash and and revenue and, and EBIT. So look at it as, as, as we're sort of three years late. So we went, you know, we went, we, we took the class uh, seventh and eighth grades a couple of times, but we're getting there now. So we are, we are moving into the high school. So I think that that's 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 how to look at it. And I want to say also on a very personal note, when I looked at this, I've been I lived in Singapore last year. I've been living in many different parts of the world. I've always been looking if I ever work in Denmark again, where do I want to work? So I had a couple of companies and Gump Space was on my list because I thought, how cool is that? This is this is absolutely new space. It's a global uh, brand and it's in Denmark, not even Denmark. It's from Albor. <laughs> I moved to Albor for this. Who knew? From Singapore, by the way, and then London and Stockholm before that. So okay, so. It, my my attitude was it, it just cannot be it just cannot be that we can't make this work. It is absolutely possible to make it work. The market is there, the people are there, the technology is there. We have not capital now. We have access to more capital. Of course, we can make this fly. So expectations, you can put it to Gump Space, you can put it to me. Is that I am totally committed personally to to make this work, and and I I, I am very convinced now that it's possible. Beginning of the year, mm, always a bit shaky. I know what to do now. So. You, you hopefully you can expect a, a, a positive journey. Aston, uh, thank you very much for joining us here today and uh, presenting Gum Space. Very interesting and super cool to hear the turnaround story from you. Uh, with that, I think we'll uh, we'll close up uh, today's uh, investor days uh, with ABG and Carsten. Uh, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Arte. Okay. Talk soon.